Hello again and welcome to SCLC TV. I'm Maynard Eaton and our president and CEO, Dr. Charles Steele Jr. Today we talk about lynching. Mr. President, our president, President Trump, uh, last week uh, made the news again by calling lynching uh, with regard to trivializing it, seemingly, with regard to a political matter. But lynching is a sensitive word for black folks, isn't it? Not? It's very sensitive. Uh, and that's because of, of, of the person that said it, uh, and I call his name President Trump. He is the President of the United States of America. Further convince you, myself, and other civil rights leaders and other concerned people that he need to be trained in terms of race relationship. The word, the term itself, lynching, is very sensitive to, I would say, 100% African American or people of African descent. Uh, and fair minded thinking people of all ethnicity and background. You don't use that word lightly. That comes from a lack of sensitivityness and training in the Kenyan philosophy. Some say disrespect too, or lack of respect. Like, well, when, whenever you get there and try to divide a country, a nation, a people of, of, of sensitivityness as well as those who are asking for help. I just got in from Brazil, remember? They asked for help. The, the, the rooted people in terms of their traditional historicity of that background and culture uh, in Brazil are over here. The rooted ones with the African Brazilian descent are over here. Nothing is in the middle. Same as here in the United States. That's why SCLC is globalized. That's why Dr. King was globalized. We live in a global society, one community, the whole world. So when you don't take advantage of an opportunity to give credit to a group of people who came out of slave and historically have gone to uh, the White House, the front house of this nation in the, in the form of, in the person of President Barack Obama, then you have to acknowledge that this is a people of very committed survival techniques, love, and forgiveness. It's a strange uh, concept in forgiveness in America. 4,000 African American men, women, and children were lynched, shot, burned, or hanged between 1877 and 1950. That's a lot of pain and agony and anguish. And those are the ones that's counting. <laughs> Man, I can go back and talk about people that just came up missing. When I was a little boy, I used to hear my mom and dad say, you know, Bob was on his way to California. They ain't seen him since. From, from Alabama to California, that's a big space. Was he lynched? Was he murdered? During those days in the 50s? And I used to hear many tales where, you know, uh, next door, somebody moved out. Well, they moved out, but they were taken out, taken away, because people were afraid to even talk about it. Those people would never be counted for. You're talking about tens of thousands of people. Well, blacks were terrorized by this so-called lynching, were they not? That's why. And, and, and it gets me when you're talking about uh, terroristic type of approaches and they arrest people for certain uses of words related to terrorizing somebody or individuals. We've been terrorized all our lives and they never used that term. Terror began when they brought African Americans from Africa to this country. Speaking of African Americans, uh, we've had civil rights leaders uh, all during this era of lynching. Uh, but sir, some suggest that you are the last standing major civil rights leader. Others are old, some have died. You're that guy now, are you not? I wouldn't like to say they're old. I would like to say they have matured. <laughs> because I'm getting in that area of my maturation. <laughs> but the fact being, uh, uh, Maynard, is that time is moving on. And people don't realize that. But when time moves on, you don't move on in forgetting your history because you're destined to repeat it. So my job is to bring about a consciousness of bringing other people, and I, I, I want to use the term young and old and millennial and all of this, that further divide folks. Yeah, you don't like that. I don't like, I don't like labels. Uh -huh. We don't have too many labels in our lives. Sure. So when people put labels on generation and people of ethnicity for a reason, to further divide. When they divide, they win. Is it lonely out here for you, being the, the, the lone voice out here in the wilderness, talking about civil rights and human rights? 
at home and, and abroad? It's very lonely. It's, it's always lonely when you've been anointed and called by God. In order to do this, you have to be called by God. I told someone, it's just like me being in the Old Testament. I talk to God. You know, God talked to folks. Verbally, you, you as a prophet, could hear God's voice. Or he'll show up in some form. Jesus was God. Are you introduced that way in your speeches? One of America's last remaining voices for civil rights, leaders of civil rights? I hear it now more than ever because many of people never thought SCLC would survive. The Southern Christian Leadership Conference. Many people get what is called amnesia, and that's terrible. They forget everything that elevated them to their status and positions in life and survive. So we're not going to forget you again, Dr. Charles Steele Jr. I'll say it, the last remaining major civil rights leader. I made it even.